to get started a packed program for you today as you can see i am ready for this holiday cheer for those of you who do not know me my name is mariah mara and i'm via 100 and i'm so excited all of you here with us today and to introduce our innovators from our Visual Arts Spotlight collection. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started first, just to give you a little introduction of how this session is gonna play out for you today. I will stop talking shortly, I promise. I will introduce Lale Punyami, our executive director here at 100, who will then introduce um, Maria Pascal from Supercell, and then we'll tell you a little bit more about this spotlight report before you finally get to hear from our, our incredible innovators who have joined us. We've got some with us here presenting today. We've got others with us in the chat, so please do engage with us there. We want to hear where you are, how you are, and uh, yeah, so. Without further ado, I would like to introduce La Cele Puñeme, as I said. So you will join us on stage to tell us a little bit more about, uh, about 100. And he's so festive, isn't he? Well, thank you, Mariah, uh, for the kind words. And welcome, everyone, to this 100 Visual Arts uh, Webinar Festival festive session today. I'm hanging today with the root of the reindeers, uh, which have been multiplied. As you can see, we are getting ready to deliver the presents here from Finland to all over the world, since all of you know that Santa Claus definitely lives in Finland. Uh, so uh, it's my great pleasure to have you all here. Um, thank you for finding the time. Uh, I work as uh, executive director and uh, as, uh, at 100 and I'm also uh, the co-founder of the organization. And um, to begin our webinar today, I will briefly introduce you the work we do at 100. So like all, all the innovators know, uh, the core work at 100 is that we identify impactful and scalable education innovations around the world. And uh, we select uh, 100 innovations a year to our global collection, but then also we produce different kind of spotlights, which are regional or thematic. Uh, and this one being the visual arts thematic spotlight, we have now selected uh, 11 uh, innovations which we are super happy and excited to promote today and that's the second thing what we do at 100 we promote these impactful and scalable education innovations and help them spread around the world we believe that that is the best way to improve the education systems and classroom practices at scale and considering the different contexts and different environments where these education innovations can be used. Uh, to be able to do so, we are organizing this kind of webinars, but also a lot of different kind of other activities so that we can create connections between our innovators, uh, education providers, and different education stakeholders around the world. And we hope that to, through these connections, uh, we are then able to uh, increase and support the implementation of these beautiful solutions and practices, which can help kids, our students, uh, learn better uh, where, wherever they are learning at the moment. And uh, uh, one of the key things what we want to do at 100 is that we are able to celebrate the great work what is taking place around 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 us and uh, one of the key things we have been doing uh, with the kind support of supercell uh, during the last years is to also organize organize our 100 innovation summit which then gathers all these great innovators together once a year this year we had the World Summit experience done virtually, and I believe that from the chat you can now find the link to figure out and learn more about the summit and the different uh, great talks we were having over there. So please engage uh, with that con content after this webinar. And then uh, additionally, uh, none of the work we are doing at the moment would be possible without our amazing caring community which is really taking the education 
seriously and they are working from their heart and soul uh, to provide excellent learning experiences to the students. And uh, uh, at the moment we have 100 ambassadors uh, from a little bit more than 100 countries around the world, but we would like to get a little bit more. So if you would be interested to be a more integral part of our 100 community, please check out the 100 ambassadors program and get involved with the work we are doing uh, together with other amazing colleagues. And today in this webinar, you will be actually meeting some of these wonderful people around the world who are joining us and explaining the work they have been doing. But let's not go deeper to the actual visual art spotlight yet. Uh, it's something that the innovators and Chris will be explaining later. But for now, it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Maria from Supercell. We have been glad to collaborate with Supercell from the beginning of 100 and many of the great great initiatives and great innovations we have been able to find would have been not found with the general support. So we are forever grateful for that one. And in 2020, uh, it, ha it has been our great pleasure to do this visual arts spotlight together with, with, uh, with Supercell's support. So Maria, the virtual stage is all yours. Thank you, Lasse. Thanks everybody for having me. I'm super excited and um, actually from Supercell's we have thank you to 100 to the innovators here today like it has been an amazing pleasure for us to collaborate with you this year. So Supercell is a mobile games company. Uh, we have our headquarters in Helsinki and uh, we have five live games. Um, I hope maybe you have heard of them or you have played them and um, yeah, we, we feel like we have been incredibly lucky and uh, for that reason we also want to give back to the community around us. Um, we call ourselves Supercellians and uh, people who work in Supercell and all Supercellians have voted uh, that they would want to support education and educational projects uh, when, when we are talking about giving back. So as our number one cause, we support education and that's why we teamed up with 100. Um, we love the work that you do. And, um, you know, this year we thought, uh, last year we did a spotlight on digital well-being. And this year we were thinking, you know, hey, what, what else uh, could we support? Where, where would, would we like to, to put some focus? And uh, we were talking to some of the game artists and they were sharing that so many times arts were discouraged uh, as a career path and you know um, we're always on the lookout, lookout for, for game artists and they're really hard to find. So we thought hey here's an opportunity to support visual arts and art uh, in education and we teamed up, we, we have been you know having a a really, really amazing time with a hundred team uh, checking innovations in visual arts from all over the world. So a big thank you to all the innovators, to the team in hundred. Uh, it's our ple pleasure to have been part of this uh, program this year. And uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to this next hour with all of you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Maria, and thank you to everybody who's engaging with us on the polls. It sounds like there's still a couple of people who might not be so familiar with Supercell's games, aren't gamers. We've got some hardcore gamers as well. So if you are a hardcore gamer and you have not heard of Supercell or played one of their games, we encourage you to check it out. Um, so uh, now I would like to introduce our head of research, Chris Petri, who is going to come on and tell us a little bit more about the visual arts in Education Spotlight Project. Chris, take it away. Thank you, Mariah. Um, greetings, everyone. Um, I'm Chris Petrie, Head of Research at 100. Um, actually, before, before I start, um, I was thinking to treat myself for the session in the Christmas spirit of me making my favorite uh, kind of chocolate chip cookies. Um, but they seem to be mysteriously disappearing, and I have no idea why. Um, Anyway, the, the recipe for these cookies have been rigorously experimented with 
for, um, with the most highest quality of their ingredients and, and process. Uh, so funnily enough, the same ingredients for these amazing cookies is also the same ingredients for fostering visual, visual arts education in, um, at a K-12 level. Uh, these, these are five ingredients and there's two key recommendations uh, in the process as follows. Um, if you take a look at the report, which is um, now available on our website from pages 52 to 55, you can see these um, in the report, as I said, is available now. Um, we're very serious at the research team at 100, so it's very important that you uh, grab a glass of mulled wine, I've got mine, um, eggnog or a festive beverage and note down these throughout. So before we, before we begin, uh, the, the, it's very important to to consider two key recommendations. Um, so they, they might seem obvious, but in this context of visual arts in, in school, I think they're really important. First one is more funding is needed at a government policy um, and leadership level. So many countries have been seeing a great reduction in funding for visual arts, education and schools. Consequently, there is a danger that schools and education systems may regress to old thinking about the purpose of education by placing even more emphasis on career readiness. And the second key recommendation for this recipe is um, to de de developing visual arts skills should be taken as seriously as literacy and numeracy. So le learning in visual arts is critical to developing different ways of self-expression and communication in un unconstrained to language. If children are not given the opportunity to cultivate these skills, then their holistic potential may not be realized. So those are the key two kind of recommendations for the process and now for the ingredients. Uh, so the first ingredient or, or um, principle to follow is visual, we think visual arts should be um, help celebrate diversity in schools. Um, so everyone has a different perspective that is valuable and visual arts helps to celebrate this diversity in a beautiful way. Second uh, recommendation, I'm just mentioning these briefly, but they're also actually paired with um, the innovations that were selected who are excellent, um, well, you know, uh, leading examples of this in, in this space across the world. So um, do, do check out that, that part of the report and you get to see the, the innovations there. So the second recommendation, um, sorry, um, principle is visual arts can can and should be integrated into all subjects to help communicate complex ideas. So that, that old saying, um, a, a picture is worth a thousand words is a particularly, um, you know, um, illustrates that. Third, third key recommendation is group as well as individual projects are needed. Um, often visual art, pro art projects tend to bias towards individual expression and development. And I particularly noticed that as a former high school teacher, which tends to get much more individualistic. So the need for more group work at that level and the potential to collaborate. Uh, the fourth key recommendation um, is students should be exposed to the diversity of careers that are possible requiring visual arts skills. So as uh, Maria pointed out before, from Supercell's perspective, it's very hard to find those people and that may be because, you know, at school, if I remember uh, when I went to school, you know, I think it's the same the case, um, the same as the case now, where kids are not really presented the, the, the huge diverse range of opportunities available. And they tend to be kind of like, well, this is, this is, you know, just something for fun. You know, you should get to the serious subjects like um, STEM and all that kind of thing. And then the final, um, the final principle, um, to, to follow is visual arts should be fostered for all students to develop emotional intelligence and self-awareness. Um, so this is one of the key benefits, children express themselves visually before they develop speech. Um, it's you know, a huge, hugely important aspect of, of our, our holistic development. Um, and that kind of rounds off that part of the report. Please do download it and read it and, and let me know what you think if you have any comments. I'm just gonna briefly also introduce um, some of the innovations that we're not able to make today's session, just so you're aware of what they are. So the first one is Kamilala. Um, if we can bring that up onto the, oh no, it's, 
okay, <laughs> Kimi Lala, um, which promotes uh, creative projects that value languages and cultures. It's a storytelling technique that comes from Japan, um, and you can read much more about it. I'm just going to give you a very brief couple of sentences because we don't have too much time. And the next one, uh, Signe Mosse from Italy. Um, it's a rule bending method of uh, creative education that brings together movement and art and workshops for learners and teachers alike. Um, it's currently got um, over 9,000 uh, people under this program in, and in 25 countries. And the next one, which might be Beep Lab. Uh, Beep Lab is an education and tra training academy founded in Taiwan since 2015 and is now based in Singapore as a registered social enterprise. So they aim to enrich and engage the minds of children, teenagers and educators through the lens of architecture. They currently have over uh, 1,000 users in four, four countries. The next one, um, Pixar in a Box from the USA, um, which currently has over 10 million users in 10 countries. Pixar in the Box is a behind the scenes look at how Pixar filmmakers do their jobs. With this curriculum and video, and video tutorials, students learn how to animate bouncing balls, um, build a swarm of robots, make virtual fireworks explode and more. And the next one is uh, Tumul, Cent Center of Creative Technologies from Armenia. Um, they currently have over 20,000 users in seven countries. Um, the the Tumul uh, learning program is made up of self-learning activities, workshops, and project labs around uh, 14 learning targets. Um, there's much more to learn about that one, um, but unfortunately I can't get into it too much. And lastly, we have 100 cameras from the USA. Um, so they're a nonprofit organization that works with kids around the world who have challenging experiences. And we teach them, and they teach them how to process and tell their stories through photography, in a way that impacts um, how they view themselves and their role in the community. So they have over 22,000 uh, children using that innovation in, over, um, in 13 countries. So sorry that we're so brief on those. Um, there's so much more and so much more interesting things to look at with those innovations. So do please go and check them out. But we're very lucky to have um, some more innovators come on board and tell you a little bit more about them. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chris, and thank you for giving us a little bit more information about what you can find in the report. In the chat, I highly encourage you to read it. It's really, it was really inspiring for me to learn about all of the amazing things that are happening in the visual arts scene. Uh, and without further ado, I would like to, in, to introduce a few more innovators who we have with us today. We'll be presenting a little bit more about their own innovations. So the first one who is going to present is Patricia Riviera. She is the head of education at Museo Moderno. And the program that was selected for this spotlight was Creative Activities for Children and Teens with Autism. So, Patricia, if you, if you are there, she's coming in. We had a little bit of problems with video earlier. Hopefully everything works out. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Mariah. Thank you. Um, I will be closing my camera because my internet is connection is not apologize for that. Um, let me tell you a little bit about um, our innovation. For us, art constitutes uh, a practice without sensitivity, and it can't always be rationalized. Therefore, it connects us to what is real and what's not. Art gives visibility to what is relevant in our world. One out of 59 children is diagnosed with autism in the world. This means that there are more children with autism than any other diseases. They usually have a relative strengths in visual processing and they can fit from using visual arts to communicate feelings and emotions. Um, I would like to show a video of um, one of the activities that we had at the museum so that I can tell you afterwards. Fuimos a ver el museo. 
Luego visitamos una sala donde hay cuadros y esculturas. Perfecto. Buscamos cuadrados adentro y fuera de los cuadros. Nos sentamos en el piso, miramos en la, en la obra del cubo y hablamos de ella. Luego entramos al ascensor y fuimos a la sala de taller. Doble, doblamos papel cuadrado para armar un cubo. Hemos tomado el, el agua y comido las listas y nos vemos a casa. Perfecto, Excelente, buenísimo. Fue una mañana hermosa la emoción de arte moderno. Um, our museum is a public museum. Oops. Can we that? Okay, um, our museum is a public museum. It depends on the funds from the city of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Our innovation focused on providing children and teens with autism and inclusive of to engage in meaningful visual arts activities. Our community outreach team designed activities that connected with the museum's collection, providing them with the opportunity to explore and observe different works of art. These activities were enhanced by vocabulary association cards designed by our in-house designers that encouraged children and teens with ASD to express their feelings as well as routines and everyday life activities. These activities were presented as part of our Museum at Home program during a period of a seven-month lockdown in Argentina. Uh, we started working with autism in 2017. As you could see, those were some of the activities that we did at the museum when lockdown was established to continue working with the groups that had attended these activities at the museum. So we designed these programs based on different themes and um, we partnered with the different organizations here in Buenos Aires and the Ministry of Education so that teachers, um, special teachers and uh, families could download them from our web. Uh, we went to lead our um, following us because there are no ASD programs here in museums in Buenos Aires. Uh, we want um, not only to adapt the book and the experience uh, to make our museum more inclusive, but also to focus on making an inclusive programming for uh, people with disabilities. Uh, we strongly believe that access to art and culture is a right and have access to it. So thank you all um, for um, choosing us. Thank you, 100, and thank you, Supercell. And thank you, Patricia. And I hope that everyone was able to hear okay. I know we had a little bit of trouble with connection, but actually we had a question in the Q&A from Anyam Patrick from Nigeria. And I think that this creative activities for children and teens with autism is a really great fit. So I encourage you to check them out. Maybe we chat a little bit more uh, in the chat about um, you know different strategies for, for helping for helping children with with special needs. Now moving on, I would like to introduce our next innovator speaker for today, and that is Holly Carter, who is the founder of By Kids. Hello, Holly. Good morning from New York, everybody. Thrilled and honored to be here to be celebrated in this way. It's a uh, Zoom, so you know, on the long list of things we're not doing this year, being in Helsinki, darn. Um, Buy Kids is a very simple concept. The idea is that we give a kid somewhere in the world who has what we call a globally relevant story, a video camera, and a world class filmmaking mentor. And the child and the mentor work together for a month. And they work together to allow the kid to serve as the director, the cinematographer, and the narrator of a short documentary film about their life, they, the kid. Um, we have a video that tells it a whole lot better than I do. So let's cue the video, please. Let me tell you my story. It's the story of my life, and I know it well. I would like you to know it too. My story is perhaps not so different from yours. Maybe we're very similar, you and I. 
Maybe by hearing my story, you will recognize yourself or someone you know. Maybe by hearing my story, you will see my world and all the distance between you and me will disappear. For a few minutes, I can tell you about where I live, what I do, what I know. And one day, many years from now, you may recognize me in a crowded room and we can say hello. Or maybe we are quite different, you and I. That's okay too. Maybe by watching my story, you will learn something you didn't know. To tell my story, I had to learn something new. To speak a new language. It is the language of the eyes and of the heart. Someone helped me learn this language, and now I can speak to you. What I like about this language is that everyone can understand it. It speaks in colors. It speaks in images. Sometimes it even speaks in silence. My story may not change the world. But my story might change your world. And maybe you will tell one of your friends about me. And your friend will tell his friend. And then it will be like we all know each other. So come and hear my story. See my story. See the world through my eyes. So that's the methodology. And what's important about what we do, which is relatively simple, is that we then, as a very small nonprofit, world headquarters of Buy Kids is right here in Manhattan, um, we partner. And our partnerships are vital to the breadth and depth of what we do. Each of the films that has encompassed um, anything from living with disability, Islamophobia, displacement, climate change, anti-Semitism, child marriage, juvenile justice. We're just finishing our 13th film. The partnership aspect of what we do is crucial. So our first incredible partner is public television. So our films are turned over um, at 27 minutes with educational material. Um, PBS then broadcasts to 84 million homes. We work with PBS Learning Media, that reaches almost 2 million teachers around the country. Um, our second important partnership is with Discovery Education that brings each of our films and each of the school guides to half the middle school and high schools in America. And because the board and I are ambitious about our goals of trying to use these films as uh, storytelling to create understanding, and more importantly, how to start very hard conversations in a scaffolded safe way, which means teachers are our best friends. We feel very strongly that these are meant to be crossing cultural divide so that global partners are crucial to us. And the partner we found to help us with that impact is Pen Pal Schools. And they take each of the films and a curriculum that includes a module around media literacy. Um, and they connect in 150 countries, student to student, with um, supported conversation. Um, so, you know, I'll take for an example we made a film made by a 17 year old Mike Martin who went to Rikers, the notorious prison, when he was 17. And Mike told a story about what it meant to be African-American, what it meant to be poor, what it meant to be caught up in the juvenile justice system. And it allowed some incredible opportunities, many of them pre-pandemic when we could be live, but we've pivoted very beautifully onto Zoom. Taking Mike and his story into places where they might never have spoken to somebody like Mike and gotten to know him as a human being, gotten to know his grandma who literally plucked him out of um, at right after he was arrested and really saved him. Uh, I think what we have learned doing this is that teachers are the heroes and should be celebrated on a global level. Uh, and the other thing is that kids need one person in their life who can make a difference. Um, that's about the mentor and the kid filmmaker part. What we really focus on in our work is how do we bring these conversations to the widest audience and so it really is an honor to be here being spotlighted by 100 that does exactly what we do which is celebrate meaningful impactful educational tools you know we think that 
the thing that's missing to me in education is putting a textbook on a tablet is not actually a 21st century talent or innovation. The real innovation is speaking to children in the language they know. And we all know as parents and watching our cultures is that kids all are filmmakers. And if they're given the opportunity to listen through moving image and express themselves through moving image and to relate to other kids through moving image, we can actually begin to create a world that is truly empathetic and truly global. Um, and that is our goal. So thank you so much. I think Santa is here with the hook. <laughs> thank you so much, Holly. And I couldn't agree more. I Every time I see that video, I get so emotional. I'm glad that I didn't have to go on right after. It's just so beautiful to, to hear students tell their own stories. Um, and I also think it's a great example of just the diversity of innovations that we have in today's collection. So I'm, I'm, thank you so much again, Holly. Um, and now to take it to another innovator doing something a little bit different, uh, I would like to introduce Arlene Tucker, the founder of Dear You. I hope that Arlene can join me on the stage. Hello, Arlene. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me and giving me time and space to share Dear You with you all. <laughs> um, you can go on to the next slide if, if that's possible. Great. So, um, Dear You is a process-based cross-cultural art project which brings children, teachers, and artists together. Um, so because we all speak different languages, in, in this project, art is used as a catalyst to make your voice heard, strengthen your voice, find your voice, um, and art is a language in itself. So you can find the way you would like to express yourself within Dear You. Um, and on the next slide. <laughs> so how it works is um, you would let me know your group and this could be a school group, it could be a homeschool group, it could be individual friends. Um, and I would find a, a match for you. Um, I have over 25 different countries at this point. And um, when you give, tell me your wishes and your motivation for why you would like to be a part of Dear You, it helps me better support you because I then can um, match your, um, your, well, your wishes. So for example, if you wanted to practice language, um, or if it was more about um, exploration of identity, for example, a school in Iceland was telling me that their middle schoolers were having a bit of a hard time, um, uh, like feeling really confident about themselves. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to insert um, strengthening identity questions and ways that we can open up what it means to be me and you within these process-based art projects. And um, every month for four months, um, and I ask that everybody commits for four months so that it gives time and space for people to get to know each other and also this, this methodology of opening dialogue. And these monthly projects, um, I call them pathfinders because they're guidelines. Um, we all understand, perceive, do things differently. So I don't want to hinder any of that. And we should celebrate all of the differences and the diversity and how, um, how we see the world. So, but the thing that is um, the same is the general exploration theme within these pathfinders. Um, so for example, here we have um, a group of students in Cape Town, South Africa, and they just went foraging and they're going to use those, um, those leaves that they found and make art and send it to their friends in Singapore. So through this um, artistic process, the 
kids in Singapore will get to know what kind of vegetation is in Cape Town because of um, Manu, <laughs> because um, because of what they have found with the, in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And so for and then also every point is is a it, it is a possibility to um, explore uh, all the different possibilities when we have these exchanges. So for example, these kids in Espo, Finland, they're investigating the stamp that um, was received on the package from their friends in Greenland. Um, and then these kids in Belgium, they made sound, um, sound paintings. So we also, it, we use different art techniques and different um, resources. I try and keep it as ecological and economical because I want to be inclusive and um, and mindful of of all the different possibilities. And on the next slide, <laughs> so this is about um, the different platforms that we can gather and. Um, open dialogue and I try and mix analog and digital dimensions in the sense that um, digital where we can create together using digital materials um, and we can zoom we can um, we can also use the website the dear you website which I going back to this uh, inclusion which is extremely important for me that it's wonderful if the parents or caretakers can also get involved. So there, you know, all the all the students' reflections and artworks are on the website. And it's also another point, a safe point, where kids can communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So we use um, just some, uh, here kids are making their, um, uh, environmental installations in Helsinki and then you know this this kid in Greenland on the top right he he's showing us um, the vegetation because one of the pathfinders um, suggested we draw trees and his response in Greenland was we don't have trees right now <laughs> and us in Finland were really confused by that and so he took a picture of it uh, of the landscape and showed us but it was only through this process and exchange that we could really um, in a concrete way get to know that and then on the next slide um, here are some links um, to the project and a short video which I will not show now. I'm happy to put it in the link for you to watch later. But um, Ule, the Finland's national broadcasting system, they made a really beautiful news clip about a class in Kokola, which is a small town in, in Northwest Finland uh, with their exchange um, with their friends in Australia. And it's a reminder of why I do why what I do and Thank you, Hundred, for being such a um, positive supporter and also to Supercell for making it more playful. Thank you so much, Arlene, to you for all of the work you do. And just for everyone to know, we will, we will send the slides over so you can check out the links, watch the video, and uh, now we'll get started. We've got two more innovators left, and then we're going to move into a more interactive part of the, about, of the webinar. So next, I would like to introduce Sunal Kapoor, who is the founder and director of Protsahan India Foundation. And the selected innovation was the Protsahan's Heart Program. So thank you, Sunal, for joining us today. And I will pass it over to you. Thank you. Um, if we can keep moving the slides as well. Um, so I'm joining in from New Delhi, India. Um, we work. Uh, with adolescent girls 
who um, so it's the intersectionality of problems that we deal with because we also very critically feel that looking at one problem point in a silo does not really um, you know help the child heal the trauma that she's going through because we are working with children who've gone through sexual violence who've gone through you know school dropouts um, they are child laborers you know, some of them are child sexual abuse survivors some some most of them that we work with don't have enough food uh, they they go to sleep on hungry stomachs when you're working with people or children like what of that would you know excite them to come to a school system? What would excite them to actually get into the learning mode? And the core thing that we figured was visual arts. Um, how we have gone about doing this is clearly, clearly, you know, um, uh, marrying the uh, the needs with the SDG framework in a way. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, Maria, uh, in in a way that basically helps, you know, the art that will help avoid the weaponization of the suffering uh, that the child has, been, has gone through uh, as, as a part of the child right violation that she's faced and how using art in a model that we call HEART, where HEART is simply an acronym, where H is healing, E is education, A is art-based life skills, R is recovery from trauma, and T is technology, where we use all of these trainings and build the entire program for scale. Um, this entire heart program is the core uh, of what we do at Protsahan, which is a Protsahan is a Hindi word that means encouragement. Um, and how, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, the protection from child abuse or the sexual violence that the child is going through, uh, the rescue work, how it ties up with education, visual arts, and how all of, all, all of that piece is woven together, along with very critical access to healthcare and gender justice. Next slide, please. I'll just take you through, um, like, we, if we can just, you know, stay on each of these images for two, three, two, three seconds, and then keep moving on. Um, this is how community screenings of films take place. Um, again, visual arts at the level of cinematic experiences for children. Uh, next, please. A lot of photography work, some beautiful work, uh, I think that was shared initially, a lot of dance work, a lot of theater work, because visual arts just does not mean pen and paper and drawing and colors. Visual arts also means performing arts, visual arts for us at Protsahan also means, it means a lot of filmmaking, camera work, photography, theater, everything that will help a childhood heal. Next slide, please. Uh, this is again one of those very beautiful artworks um, done by a 16 year old who's recovering from incest. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a bunch of 28 girls who worked with NASCOM and Intel, uh, Intel, the ones who make the chips on our computers, uh, and how they designed this entire process. Again, it was done from a perspective of what was needed in the community to how the girls visualized technology with practice prototypes and visualized it as a part of art-based program to get that technology prototype to action in their community for solving a community problem. Next slide, please. These are just some of the pictures of how, you know, again, camera work. Next slide, please. This was a film that we were making on child marriage. Uh, this is, again, how we use visual arts to do storytelling, a lot of the work to train the trainers at, you know, in the government schools, in hundreds of other NGOs in the country, how we use the entire core of creativity, empathy, and intersectionality as a core values of visual arts programs. And the impact that we saw, um, you know, with the Protsahan girls has been insanely amazing. When we say we use visual arts, again, you know, uh, which, which is uh, the five pillar creativity model, as we say, or the heart model, um, a lot of, you know, we have seen the resilience build up. These were proper scales and subsets and, you know, a proper longitudinal study that was done at the center for anybody who wants to access this report. Uh, it's easily available. I'll be more than happy to share this. But we saw 89% of the girls at Protsahan, and this is uh, across 10 years, that 89% of the girls, you know, they saw an increase in the resilience value, which was again measured on scientific scales. 78% of the girls scored very high on creativity, humor, and relationships upscale. 85% uh, of the girls increased their self-esteem both social self-esteem and academic self-esteem and overall positive well-being of the girls coming from extremely traumatic uh, conditions improved. Mm -hmm. So when we look at visual arts, it's not just a storytelling technique. It's something that helps a child, specifically adolescent girls that we work with, heal the trauma, the psychosocial trauma um, that, we come, that they come from. So visual arts help heal, uh, which is a message that Prod Sahan wants to give out through its heart program. Thank you. Over to Maria.
Amazing. Thank you so much, Sana. And I really resonated with me what you said about how art is not just pen and paper. It is not just um, you know, it can be dance, it can be music, it can be everything. And I think uh, Protsahan is a great example of that. So uh, moving forward, we've got one last innovation left for you to present today. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the co-founder and CEO of Art Illusion uh, and their initiative, the Virtual Bridges Initiative. So hello, Joel, welcome. Hello, thank you. Thanks, Maria. Um, so yes, I'm going to be talking about our Virtual Bridges Initiative, and I'm Joel from Artolution. And um, you can go to the next slide. What we do with Artolution is we focus on collaborative art making in communities that are marginalized, that have experienced trauma and conflict all around the world. And so we use mediums like community murals and, and sculptures, as well as performative arts like dance and theater. But all of them, the, the thing that unites all of it is that our methodology focuses on really making sure that all of the participants are the ones who come up with the ideas and also build relationships with each other and with their community through the artwork. And so we work in places like uh, Colombia, where we have a big program, as well as in Uganda, in Bangladesh, in the Rohingya refugee camps, as well as in the Syrian refugee camps in Jordan. And we do many projects in the United States and then some in other parts of the world as well. Um, and so you can go to the next slide. So one of our programs is in the Bidi Bidi refugee settlement which is in uh, northern Uganda, and everyone in that settlement is from South Sudan, and it's near the border of South Sudan. And so this program, it's for young people like Joy. Um, and you use Joy as an example of one of our participants to, to show what our, our programs are all about, and especially our Virtual Bridges program. So Joy is 12 years old, and she came from South Sudan and she had to flee the conflict and she lost family members. She went through the trauma of war. She went through many experiences that no one should go through and especially no child should go through. And her family uh, eventually made it to Northern Uganda and ended up in the largest refugee settlement in all of Africa. And while their lives were very challenging and they were, they were very isolated from the world, you can imagine that when COVID began, it became even more isolated and things got even more challenging for them. And so many of the schools, you see this picture here is one of the schools where we were working pre-COVID and none of these children are now in school because of COVID. And so that's why uh, for them, it's very difficult to make these connections now. So you can go to the next slide. So now what we have through our Virtual Bridges program uh, is an opportunity for young people like Joy to connect with other young people like herself and other artists all around the world. And so we've been doing programs that uh, feature art forms like stop motion animation and theater, mask making, dance, painting, digital art. So all different kinds of art forms and so Joy and many, many of her peers around the world are now learning new skills through the arts um, and they are forming new relationships and really learning in a very personal way about other cultures and having this experience of, you know, it's one thing to, to watch a documentary or read about another culture. It's a very different thing and a much more personal thing to actually meet someone your age, like you, in a very different social context and be able to ask them questions about their lives and really get to be actually friends with them over the course of time and have that opportunity to create together and create collaborative works of art of many different genres. And so many of our, uh, of our teaching artists across the world in all these different programs are also from the local communities. And that's a really big part of what we do with Artolution is that the people leading these projects, for example, in the Azraq refugee camp in Jordan, all 10 of our artists are Syrian refugees themselves. They live in the camp, they're residents. They've had many of the same experiences as the young people have that they are, that they are working with year round. And uh, so for them, 
this is something that it has really changed their lives because this is livelihoods. This is uh, providing a career for them and new skills for them. And this is how they feed their family year round is through these art space programs. And they have this opportunity to really change the lives of the children and the youth in their communities through these programs. Um, you can go to the next slide. So, um, you know, a lot of the core of our work is really about storytelling. It's about creating one's own narrative and have the power to be able to tell your own story. And so all the different forms that we have, it really centers around that. And so I'll, I'll give one example of this character here. Um, so this was through a collaborative project and the one who came up with this story was named Christelle from Honduras, who is an asylum seeker in New York now. So she's 14 years old. She said, my character is named Dakota. And Dakota is a baby, but she's a thousand years old. And her parents were demons. And that's why she has these demon wings that you see on her back. However, you know, as demons, they didn't show her any love. But Dakota rejected that. And she said, I do believe in love. And I, I don't want to grow up how my parents are. I actually want to spread love and joy to the world. And so she has a magical baby rattle that she goes around and she flies around the world and she spreads love to all that she meets. And I thought that was a beautiful story. And I think it really combines fiction with many elements of Christelle's own life. And this is something that she was able to share with all of the other participants. She created this painting and then she also created a costume and a mask and this became part of a performance. She also created an animated work. Uh, she learned how to do some animation and created an animated work out of her character. So she's really able through this storytelling to express herself and, in, in many different ways and learn many different skills related to this. So uh, the last thing I'll say is that our work is, uh, we, we work with many partners and especially humanitarian agencies such as UNICEF and UNHCR, which is the United Nations Refugee Agency, um, and then many other both very small grassroots community organizations as well as large humanitarian uh, global aid agencies and, and many others. And so we're really grateful for all of these partnerships that make this work possible. And lastly, I'll say thank you so much to 100 and to Supercell. We really appreciate uh, being part of this really, really incredible and inspiring group. Thank you so much, Joel. And thank you to all of our incredible innovators, both the ones who presented today, those who are here in the chat, and those who are not able to make it today. Um, we're just so grateful to, to be able to highlight the incredible work that you're doing and really show the diversity of options available for the visual arts uh, in visual arts. Um, so, we have a special surprise for you. We will move into a more interactive, but be mindful of everyone's time. We um, have, our partner Supercell has generously, um, has generously decided to help uh, some of our innovators by donating to, um, to some, of these, uh, some of these innovations. And um, the special surprise is for our attendees who are with us today. So, we are going to be auctioning off some of the pictures from our innovators. So if you could move on to the next slide. We have one such picture from Sigini Masi, who was not presenting today, but I can see them in the chat. Um, so for our attendees, how this will work is we randomly selected some of, the, some of the participants here today. So afterwards, we'll follow up with an email. And if you could give us your address, we will ship you a framed picture of this beautiful work of art uh, to wherever you are in the world. So without further ado, maybe we can have a drum roll, maybe not. Um, but this first picture goes to Wendy Nguyen. I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong, um, but uh, we would love to send you this this beautiful picture. So next slide, please. And this one is from By Kids. And the winner of this beautiful piece of art, art is Lauren Hand. So next, moving on, we are going to, as you saw earlier, this is from Protsahan, uh, an artwork from one of the students that we discussed here today. This one is for Claudia L. Bahin. 
Vicky, oh, I know I butchered that. I'm so sorry, but I hope you understood who you were and that you're excited. And the next and final piece of art today will, is from Dear You, and that will be for Regia Bello Almuni. Oh, goodness, this was, this, I'm, so, I'm so glad that this is over, and I'm so sorry if I said anybody's names. But thank you again to all of our innovators and to Supercell and to all of you, you wonderful attendees. And I hope that you come back and we can do something like this again because I was not done. There is one more picture. And the person who is going to win this artwork is Irina Mikal. Okay, so that was exciting. <laughs> it was quick. We're gonna move on now. So we've got one more piece to share with you today. Uh, one of my colleagues is going to drop a link in the chat. So we've created a special jam board uh, for this. I don't know if anybody has used this before. Anyone who's a teacher knows that sometimes these interactive things don't go so well. So here we are at the end of the session. But on this jam board, you will find pictures from all of our selected innovators, the ones who were here today, the ones who were not here today. And uh, you will also find some holiday drink recipes. I've got mine with me today. It's early here in Chicago, so it's a, it's coffee with um, some coconut mint chocolate cream in it. Uh, and if you have your own special drink recipe, we encourage you to leave it. We have a, a Christmas music soundtrack. Thank you so much for bringing it up. So this is what it looks like. You can see with the cover image, the drinks as I mentioned, uh, and moving forward, you can see some pictures from our innovators and their artwork. So we encourage you to, um, you know, leave some sticky notes, tell them what emotions these pictures elicit and um, really just appreciate the beautiful work of art and the impact that, that these innovators have. It's, um, it's, it's been such a privilege and a joy to, to learn more about them and to be with you here today. So with that, uh, we will drop one last poll to check out how you're feeling today. But please, we encourage you to take a look through our Jamboard. It will be available afterwards. We can send you the link in the follow-up. With that, I think they'll play me off with some music. And um, I just want to say one more time, a big thank you to Supercell, to all of our innovators, and to all of our attendees for, for joining us today for this first ever holiday webinar. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the year and I can't wait for 2021. <laughs> and uh, yes, thank you so much and uh, take care everyone. Yeah.